Following the easing of restrictions coming out of the second national lockdown, Stretford Paddock resumed hostilities in the Lancashire and Cheshire First Division. On a cold Monday night in December, Trafford United were put to the sword by a breathtaking display of firepower from the paddock with Akira Simmons and Isaac Buckley Ricketts leading the line as the lads produced six of the best. scoring six. Um, just want to see us crack on, finish it up now on um, on Saturday for Christmas and then uh, start back again in January and, uh, and try and get this thing won. This game sadly turned out to be the final one of the league campaign as Covid restrictions tightened back up. The league season is curtailed, Paddock finish on 16 points from eight games, an identical record to De La Salle. So that's it, the league done and dusted. But the Rhodes Cup offers an opportunity for silverware in the new year. It's the First Division and Premier Division teams that will face off to finish the season. You big stupid on some stuff as well. But until then, be very fucking wary. That means all of you switch on loads of fucking communication. You think you're going to have a fucking easy game with these? They're going to try and kick the living fuck out of you, lads. Um, not happy with our own performance, I would say. In this, I thought there's gears and levels to go through for us. Is it rustiness? Could be. Um, I think the lads have got a dig in a little bit more at training, see more numbers at training because it's been disappointing that this week and I, I would like us to improve on that if we're going to have a chance in this. But going into the game next week, obviously we're playing here again. Do you want to exploit the size of this pitch? So you no, mentioned no. before about that. We're at Right Robin next week. We're away next week? No, we're at Right Robin next week. Okay. Um, so, um, hang on, who is it we're playing? Let me have a look. Oh God, real fucking tough game next week in North Morton. <clears throat> We've got North Watford next week at Right Robbie. Going off the back of this performance, what are you looking for in the next game? Uh, a lot more in every area, I think. I think um, I think that North Watford is going to be a tough game again. Um, certainly starting this group with a bit of a baptism of fire. We've just got to be um, equal to it or better than it. You know, we're not here to um, to make the numbers up. We're here to try and to compete and to win matches and. We'll be going out with the exact same mentality next week, try and win the game, um, but we have to be better in all areas and I think some of the players themselves know they need to be better next week. Let's hope that we are. Basically, like, we're looking at fucking, let's get maximum violence. Start fucking coming out claiming them. You're probably playing behind the same back four every week. Get used to it, get vocal with it. I'll send you the tactical handbook that we've got. Learn it, know where they're supposed to be. Narrow, constantly fucking narrow. Don't let them have big gaps in the team about four. And I want to be able to hear you on the side. Of so it's a stop. If you can't follow the fucking instructions, you're not going to fucking win matches. We can rely on our individual talent, which we've got fucking plenty of. But when we work as a team and turn up, we will fuck anyone that they put in front of us. You have to get used to working in the fucking system and following the instructions. That was fucking shocking, the bad lad. They're well happy. A poor start against Polonia and an absolute thrashing at the hands of North Walkden left Paddock bottom of the group, needing three wins from three to progress to the quarter final. We are a team of players that can fucking absolutely play football. Individually, there's not a team for five leagues that comes anywhere fucking near us. But we are not a football team. We're 11 fucking blokes wearing the same shirt. And that's the fucking difference with us. It's not fucking good enough. You're not there for your teammates and you're not there for the training. I know some of your work and I know circumstances change on a day by day fucking basis. But the numbers are shite and we can't improve. Do you lot want to sit here for the next fucking three weekends? after another game that you should have won and didn't, 
and get fucking chinned out of this league, out of this cup, without fucking picking anything up at the end of this season. I know it's our first season, but I thought we'd done fucking pretty well to finish joint top in the league part. I'm not finishing joint fucking bottom in the cup part. Demand more of your fucking selves and your teammates. All of you are in the fucking firing line for changes. All of you. I don't give a fuck who you play for, you're all in the firing line of changing. Poor performances and poor results mean the coaching staff are turning up the That's heat the in chance. training. Paddock needs to win all three remaining matches to progress to the knockout stage. Let's make it fucking crisp, lads! Better than that, Hill. Gonna take this spot kick, can he convert it? He can! Get past this man, he can! Can he convert? Yes, he can! Goal. That is a Shot. Oh, <laughs> yes! Get in. 3-0. Buckley Ricketts with an absolute pearl of a free kick. That's a long ball from Cam. What was it? I know the bouncer's caught out the defender. Hands us through. And then... Yeah! Uh, but of course, it's looking much more confident as we said they did. And it's a brilliant reverse pass. Isaac's on Some side. Guys. Can he make it too? Goes around the keeper and puts yeah! it in. There is the second. Easy as you like. Through to the quarterfinals, which will be played on the 15th of May. So write that down on your calendars. But it's going to be a very, very tough see. game as you against Mella first. Mella, sure Paddock, what the standard is in the Premier Division. Paddock are completely outclassed and the club's first season is over. The league was cancelled and they've been well beaten in the cup. They've lost the stadium and they're about to lose the best players to professional sides. There's been some positives, but the feeling is flat. There's work to be done. I'm Yain Evans. I oversee the technical development of uh, the players across all squads at the club, as well as the development of our coaches to offer players the best practice they can get. Obviously it's only been one season, but the track record is that we have moved on double-digit players to higher teams. Um, so more players are coming to us, and unfortunately they can't all play in the first team or the reserves. So the devs will be there for those who are possibly ready for men's football, um, but that aren't quite at that level and the 21s is for those we see the potential and they just need either a full 90 to complement uh, a few minutes in one of the men's teams or they just need help developing themselves technically, physically in the 21s playing against boys of their own age. Well, I mean, the first thing that we had to think about was recruitment of coaches and staff. So we brought in some new coaches, but also people to help um, outside of the pitch so in terms of player development plans and things like that so we've got Dale that's come in to help with that side. Another concern will be facilities something we struggled with last season so bringing in two extra teams is something we need to worry about for training and match days. Hi my name's Dale Boydell I'm the head of player development at Stratford Paddock Football Club. Since the expansion of two squads into four it was noted that really we needed somebody to internally verify how players progress from the under 21s through the reserves eventually finding themselves into the first team and this coach or person needed to be independent of any one entity Do you know so i had a clear and concise view of what i was looking at give that information through also to design and deliver a player pathway plan so it was evidence-based we had the regulatory data building it up through set challenges to players and also doing confidential reports and one-to-one -one sessions with them. So when the time came that a player would leave a squad and move to another one, it was all evidence-based. It wasn't done on opinions. For your deal with Puma, um, I think a massive validation of where we've come in in 12 months. Um, we did well with, with Umbro and, and Umbro did come back in with an offer and we also spoke to Nike and we also spoke to Adidas but we thought that the best offer in the, and actually the brand that understood us the most was Puma and the fact that they've 
signed a four-year deal with us sort of really validates what we're about and, and gives us the confidence to try and kick on to the next level. The good thing about Turin Moss is you can sort of stretch out a little bit onto the outside of the pitch. It's open, easy for people to get to, but the flip side, it was quite a wet summer. Um, pitches were taking quite a bit of damage and obviously as you got to the back end of summer, getting darker earlier, no floodlights, so you're having to shorten those trial periods and you're trying to balance having the trialists or looking at trialists while managing your current squad and the players from the season before and giving them a good training session as well. So finding the right balance and making the time work for you was a challenge. The quality of player coming through during the trials, because we had such a quantity of people who were trialling, it was hard to sift through. So we staged it initially placing people in squads and having a chat with them and saying you will go into this squad whichever one you're in for a trial period of four set games then we'll come back and reassess so all this would have taken place as the seasons started squads are starting to be assembled and steve's taking various lads with the first team to see what they're about just like last season they're off to ducking field but also denton for a set of challenging pre-season clashes but they didn't exactly go to plan. So Steve, 4-0 against the opponents we first faced oh, nearly over a year ago. How do you think that went? <laughs> Looks like it's gone backwards, doesn't it? I don't think it has gone backwards. Um, they were better than they were last year. Where is he? He's up there in his career. Uh... On the town, come on! <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want my highlight reel as well. I want my highlight reel. I mean, check it out. Pre-season has been tough. I thought we'd have closed the gap from last year to, to this year with Ducking Field uh, and actually feel like we'd gone backwards or they took the game more seriously than they did last year and it felt like we were miles away. It felt like we had a lot of work to do. After playing them last year, knowing how much we'd progressed in the season, I thought we'd run them close. It wasn't the case. There was a, an absolute chasm between us and them. Denton are at more of a level that we aspiring to get to sooner. And I thought that would be a closer game with them, but it wasn't. I don't think it was a 4-0 game. I think it was tighter than that, but they beat us and they give us a real good game. And they show us that there's another gear to go through and there's other levels to go through and we have to start learning. And I think we need to change the way we've been playing. Up the one touch, yeah? Give and go. Ronnie, Ronnie. Pass and move in the final third. They're not gonna track Both of those clubs exist in a place where no, they're, they're a lot more established than we are, but they're, they're at a place that we want to get to. And our players aren't really leaving and going to those places, they're going higher than those places. So I know that within the squad we've got the capabilities of competing at least with those. So we have to look internally, we have to look at ourselves as a coaching staff, we have to look at how we're correctly utilising this team. And if we want to be competitive, we have to have things right, and they have to be right off the pitch and on the pitch. And we have to create an identity that really suits who we are and follow that. I don't think last year we managed to really get an identity. We played off the cuff a lot and it was exciting and we won a lot of games. But I think we have to rely and have something to rely on and something to fall back on that's got a little bit more substance. In the summer, Paddock were promoted to the Premier Division. The pressure is really on, especially because the opening fixture is a poor performance and a draw against Moston Brook. Ronaldo and Norsa bid farewell as they leave to join former captain Martin Parker, who's now the new assistant manager at Ramsbottom United. The loss of players puts a strain on the team. The new look squad isn't quite gelling. A last minute capitulation to Old Force, De La Salle, sees Paddock's first loss of the season. It could all unravel from here. All the other players um, have deserved their move up and it's what we wanted to help them with. Now, although we'll miss their ability, what it gives us an opportunity to do is to edit the culture at the club a little bit, because I think we ended up having a lot of technical players um, who work together but it didn't, we didn't get that team ethos of how we wanted to play sometimes. It improved as we got to the back end of the season but I think we've almost got an opportunity now 
to reset the blueprint and with the new players coming in, we'll adapt, we want a balance of technical but also work ethic and we want to make sure that they gel as a team and when we're able to give them tactical instructions, they can follow those all together and that's what will take us to the next level. We found a venue um, in Manchester, it's in Hardwick. Uh, it's quite a well-known venue to, to people within the city. It's, it's called Nichols. It's part of Manchester College. The good about it, it's available, which is more than you can say for 99% of the rest of the facilities in Manchester. The bad about it, it might be the oldest pitch in Manchester. So it's quite a tired 3G pitch. It's not the, the carpet and you know, the springy, spongy surface. Some of the modern, brand new built 3Gs are, are sensational. And, and some of them really suit how we want to play. This is because it's so old, has almost got that sand sort of astroturf feel where the ball bounces quite high and it's a little bit harder on the knees. It's not ideal, but it's available. And if it wasn't available, I honestly don't know what we would have done this year. It got close. It got to the point where the league was going, you need to tell us where you're playing. The reserves and the development team are playing at Turn Moss on a weekend, but the whole club trains out of Nichols. Last week, we had 37% possession. It's the lowest that we've had ever. We, um, again, we, we defaulted to the instruction too much, especially in the second half, we just fucking kept digging it. The coaching staff have decided to make use of the classroom at the training ground to do analysis, tactical work, and see if the team can be educated on how the gaffer wants them to play. And it pays off immediately. AFC Oldham are the first victims to a revamped paddock. A new look team with a new identity, looking to press high and play with intensity. Josh Smith stands out from the crowd. A gritty little winger with the eye for spectacular, lobs the keeper at the whistle to take his tally to five goals in three starts as the lads run out 5-2 winners. Um, well, obviously you can't do it now because no one's here, but when everyone's here, show them all this and stuff, you know what I mean? This is like, the people think that football's a fucking piece of piss to, to analyse and, and you know what, it is. But the more you drill into it, like the more you start to... That looks like a really doctor scan, that, not it? <laughs> but do you know what though, it's, it's easy once you understand what it is and like, I've shown you that one now, so you'll understand that one pretty much now. Yeah. If, I, if I flash that out the other day, uh, next week and go, this is how many PPDA, you'd be like, Oh, 32's not very good, 6's pretty good. Because yeah. so you, you've understood it, because it, it takes you a minute to fucking explain it. You can go through the rest of them. I mean, ball possession, I'm sure you can figure that one out. Passing accuracy, you can figure all of these out. Show us the next one what you think we won't know about. I'm not even going to look. They don't really matter, the expected What do you goals. say? I'm not even looking, I'm confused. Man. Nah, you know, you know that, that PBF, whatever it is, didn't then, I've lost. Actually, you're not, you're not, you're not forwards though. You, you won't be involved in that sort of spot. Actually, you won't Today, what we discussed yesterday, five things to focus on. Win your 50-50s, win your aerial duels, keep the ball and get loads of shots off, okay? But it's based now over there, no one's fucking yeah, up there. This is why I'm saying, I fucking took a shot let's over get there our heads off. There. Hams, that's where you're supposed to come in as the final fucking bit. As we're transitioning through the <laughs> centre, put it into Hams, Hams transition it into the wide areas, and then you follow it in and get on the end of it. Been... The run continues at home to watch Dalians as Smith combines with Malloy to take victory in match day five. I'm not going to touch on where I think we can improve because I think we all know maybe a little bit sharper, maybe take a little bit of a breath, uh, maybe a little bit smarter with some of the play. But overall, I think that was a, a well fought win. Not quite North Wharton, well fought, but it was a well fought win. So, congratulations, well done. Hopefully, the results have gone our way. We could have been talking about it. But then it's East Manchester from a higher level in the Manchester Challenge Trophy. A dominant performance doesn't yield goals and it takes a spectacular last-minute free kick from Malloy to progress to the quarter-finals. Paddock are on the run. And the last kick of the game! Oh, look at the scenes! Can you believe it? Lads, 
we can be fucking proud. anybody that we want to fucking beat. It starts with hard work, doesn't it? Hard work wins the fucking day. Put the fucking Milton caused some problems, taking a two goal lead before the game descends into madness. And the madness continued into injury time when Al Marsi scored to give Paddock the win. Right, Steve, uh, after last week, I think, you know, pretty unbelievable. Two weeks in a row now you've scored a winner in the last minute of the game. Just try and at least sum up how you feel after that. Uh, it's a brilliant story. I'd rather we were safer. I'd rather we were boring and 2 3 nil up and just cruised into full time every single week. But, you know, it was very exciting. What it tells you is this team does not take losing. It tells you that this team will always fight to the end and that this team is never done. Roch Dalians are back in the opposite corner, but Paddock are now on fire. Four goals with no answer makes it five consecutive wins for the Reds. Stretford Paddock lies second in the table. They have the potential to go top of the league today. A win or a draw will do that because De La Salle are not playing today. Oh dear, and Umar Sinclair there has just gone down. You may have just missed it on the left side of your picture there. Stephen Housen's concerned and Umar Sinclair has been knocked out cold there. And he's had to be substituted for Keen Swindles. It's not good for Sinclair. We'll report on how he's doing later on. You do not fucking deserve to be free and alone. So you don't need to go out there with the mentality of you've got to work your fucking way back into this game because the performance doesn't reflect it right now. For fucking Omar's sake, because he was knocked the fuck out, he's going to need stitches. Get your fucking heads in this, and I want to see you react like they've just put your fucking mate in hospital. Abacus Media are rocked with a four-goal spree in eight minutes either side of half-time, and Paddock find themselves in a title race. Joshua Smith started off as a reserve player within the second tier at Stratford Paddock Football Club. He was given a set amount of games that we watched and overviewed and as we know ourselves now, we set the challenges, we wrote a confidential report, sat with the player and agreed to move him into the first team. He's gone from a right back in the reserves to the all-time leading goal scorer within the first team, so we're pro proving that the player pathway works. Manchester Challenge trophy time again and Denton Town from the Cheshire League are the opponents. It's the first time Paddock have faced a semi-pro side. Yeah. Oatsy coming you, back post is NASA and then the rest of the lads are just picking yeah, yeah. up whatever they can pick up. Um, Mikey come in, narrow, pull some on the outside and just fucking be there for each other. Work and just fucking make sure we're always plus one and communicate, yeah? One thing you're quiet and you're quiet. Don't be fucking quiet today. One thing. <laughs> No, I mean like it's free fucking. How the fuck is it free? Only fifteen minutes. We've got about ten shots. We we wider. Got to make some fucking count, man. Yeah! Come on! Come on! What a fucking goal! But the mistakes cost Paddock a semi-final spot. Despite the result, there's a lot to take from the performance. The team has evolved, the work is showing, the training is paying off. You can really see who they are now. They were not there, they were I think they have one standout player, their left back. And that was it. Yeah, they're they're back. Back. Yes, we'll just win the fucking league today, won't we? Yeah. If we play like that, we can't. Now, team we got this week. We put six past them, but we conceded two. Get your name on it. Claim it. Move forward. What does the other three do? Create a back three behind him, nice and tight, in line. Then what we're looking for? Second balls. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have an attack against you, defending a little mini goal. North Walkden, the team who destroyed Paddock in the oh, Cup only seven months ago, are run ragged in a very confident, dominant Paddock performance. Oh, 
Despite taking a 3-0 lead at half-time, Stephen isn't happy with the lads and he turns into them. He's doing the fundamentals correct and getting the ball down, playing football and putting it in the back of the fucking net. I don't see any fucking showboating. I don't see anyone thinking that they're going to start fucking blasting tricks out or getting lazy. And that includes tracking back, checking your fucking shoulder and doing the fundamental things correctly. Plus one in the defence, plus one in attack, plus one when playing out. It's very fucking simple. Fucking seal it, lads. Come on, that's got to be. Go on, just fucking hit it. Yeah. Yes, come on. What we need is application. People who turn up on time can take feedback, can be criticised, and then have that willingness to change and to build. And I think we have that in abundance now. The gaffer thinks the time is right to challenge the lads with a high-level friendly. Enter former captain Martin Parker and his Ramsbottom side, who play five leagues higher in the Northern Premier League. That's step four of the English football non-league pyramid. Ramsbottom are as far away from Paddock as Sunderland are from Ramsbottom. So this is going to be the biggest test the lads have ever faced. It was a, a, a really tough test for us, that. I think um, the Paddock lads play really well, uh, the fitness was there, uh, you press really well, uh, and made, made it really difficult for us. So I think overall, we, we really enjoyed it, it was a good test. And to be honest, you can see you can see the improvement. I think from obviously from, from starting, it's always going to be a tough, fast kind of throwing um, a squad of lads together and asking them to play a certain way. Uh, but I think the progress that, that's been made for Paddock on the pitch is, is there for all to see. In, 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 uh, you've, just, you've just took us on a team that are kind of four or five divisions above and it's a, uh, a massive improvement, you can see it. Um, on one hand, I'm, I'm quite pleased. On the other hand, obviously, I'm, I'm disappointed coming away with a defeat. I'm always going to be disappointed coming away with a defeat. And I think the manner of the defeat, I think the last five or ten minutes, I think they actually really shown their quality and I think some gaps appeared as, as we kind of chased the goal. Um, so I'm disappointed not to come away with a goal. I think we had the opportunities there to score a goal. I'm disappointed with the, the manner of how we conceded. Um, I'm pleased with our pressing, I'm pleased with our shape, I'm pleased with our commitment, and I'm, compl I'm pleased with some of the quality that we've shown. And I, I think we can hold our heads high, as, as Parker's just said. I think we, we came up against an opposition that we weren't meant to beat. Um, and I think we get a really good account of ourselves. I think it was good to see what the level is that we're going to have to get to um, and see how far away we are and I, I don't think we're a million miles away. I think it gives me confidence to think that we can start to look up the leagues and start to think that we can go a little bit higher than we are. Um, but obviously Saturday it's back to, um, it's back and to the And here's Kieran Malloy once league. more. On his left foot. Oh, and it's in. Defeat in midweek hasn't altered the charge. Paddock dispatched Milton again to go eight points clear at the top of the Premier Division. Ball at the box, it's headed in! Excellent third goal, goes straight for Paddock, and it's Puma Carl Jenkins with a header. Smith, Tom Jones at the back post is there, here he is, it's six. Brilliant spot by Josh Smith to pick out Tom Jones. Paddock at top, De La Salle second. Covid issues around the league leave both teams without a game and Paddock see the chance to strike a massive blow towards winning the title. At the moment we're not fucking know, but by the looks of it we could be playing De La Salle for a title this either tomorrow. That's that's, uh, that's a bad idea. Can you not turn around and say to them it's too short now it's? Fuck them, we'll beat them. <laughs> uh, this is our title. With just 24 hours notice, the game no is arranged and preparation they didn't take begins. Our they play free is it enough time? They're quite aggressive and physical when they play it. There'll definitely be elbows and bullshit at corners. 
This is a big one. A win almost stands Paddock the title. A loss takes it out of their hands. Come on! It's high stakes and we're all in.